Hey photographers, it's Ben from TAFE here. Hope you are very well. I'm putting together a video here about time lapse photography. A great time lapse is a well planned time lapse. You want a great location, you hopefully want interesting weather, and you want your cameras to be, you know, ready. You want the batteries charged, you want your settings right. You want everything to be going very well for you. What you also want is a bit of vision. You want to have an idea about what the time lapse will look. And then you want to go out and try and make it. I, uh, when I went out to make a couple of time lapses for this video, had an idea of going to my local park. It's called um, unofficially Turtle Park. It's behind um, the North Albury football ground. And I thought um, I could get a couple of different angles on some trees and some bushes and some of the turtle kind of, they're actually turtle sort of, I don't know if they're play equipment or just statues or whatever, but they're, they're cool and I wanted to incorporate them. What I was really hoping for was like a, a really deep, dark, moody sky or a, either that or a really cool sunrise. Uh, so I got up really early after I'd spent the night before preparing and got out there. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't great, but uh, for the purposes of this video, I'm still going to show you the time lapses I made and walk you through the process. If I can offer one bit of advice, it is stay warm when you're doing these things in winter. Wear some gloves, wear some serious shoes, wear a jacket. Um, if you get cold, your brain starts to go weird, you make dumb decisions, your fingers don't work, you drop lenses. I've been there, I've done all that. Now I just dress like an Eskimo and i found my work looks better because of it. Now when you're aiming to do a sunrise time lapse or a sunset time lapse, um, and even though I was being really optimistic given the weather forecast, you really got to work out where the sun's going to be. Uh, Google is great for this. Google Maps is epic for this. I have an app on my phone called Sunseeker, which I cost me, well, I don't know, a couple of bucks, maybe more, uh, but it was totally worth it. And what this app does is it drops, um, it drops a map right over your location, and then it gives you some arrows as to uh, the direction of where the sun is going to rise, where it is going to set. It's got a compass in it so you can sort of point the phone and work out where the sun is in relation to where you want to be shooting and it's even got this cool feature which uses the camera in your phone so you can literally point your camera at a scene and then it will sort of transpose some lines and guidance as to when the sun will wash through that that area of the sky that you've got framed in your camera it's pretty cool, um, check it out if you want to, or just do it the old fashioned way and do Google Maps. So it's pretty important to look after your gear, yeah? It's gonna get wet and moist out there more often than not. Luckily, this time I had a giant turtle to um, hide my gear under from the rain. Time lapses are great because they compress time. Um, and it can give one the, the end product of a time lapse gives the impression that you've sped up time, you're watching time go by faster. So you can essentially compress a day into a couple of minutes. To do that, you've got to do some sums, but don't be stressed, they're not too hard. The key thing to remember here is that when you're watching footage, generally, say at the cinema or on telly, you're more often than not seeing. For every second of footage you see on the big screen, you're seeing 30 still images played really quickly one after the other. That's what makes video look smooth um, and seamless. So knowing that you need roughly 30 frames, um, 30 still images out of your camera for one second of footage, you can then do some maths to sort of work out where to go from there. Something else to consider is how long a period of time do you want to compress into your time lapse. 
and how long your, you want your finish time lapse to appear. It, it sounds really complicated and it kind of is, but really the best way to learn this stuff is to just go out, let your camera fire off a couple of hundred, a couple of fra hundred frames, make a time lapse and look at it and go from there and tweak and learn as you go. Don't get bogged down in the maths, just go out and have fun. Alright, so for my other time lapse, I'm on my bigger camera, I'm locked off on a tripod and I'm shooting on manual mode and I've just um, found a exposure that I've liked that has uh, looked cool. What I've done is underexposed the scene because it's sort of really bleak and a bit bland just that particular day uh, and I've underexposed to try and get some details out in the clouds. Um, Sometimes with these bigger cameras, they're a bit harder to get um, get a time lapse out of than say GoPros and iPhones and things like that, who have sort of built-in software designed just to do it. Sometimes you'll need to buy a thing called an intervalometer, uh, which is a device which is sort of it's like a fancy timer for your camera. Some newer cameras have intervalometers built in. A lot of Nikons in particular do this and a lot of the newer Olympuses do, such as this one here. Um, but a lot of there's a lot of third party um, ways to get around this. A lot of phones have apps which if you buy the right cord you can plug into your camera uh, which can get you around the problem too. The best way to find out how to shoot a time lapse on, to, on your camera is um, ask us here at TAFE or get on Google and put your camera's make and model into the search bar and say how to do a time lapse with it. You'll get an answer, no worries. Okay, so you've got a bunch of pictures now out of your camera and into your computer and now you want to put them together into a time lapse. Here's a workflow I use. It's pretty cheap, it's pretty basic, but it works well. There's plenty of other ways to do this, and I encourage you to go find your own, or if you want to, you can use this one. So first up, I've got a bunch of images, and I manage all my images in Aperture. So they're just there, they're sitting all there together, which is great. If I want to edit one, I'll edit it, then I will lift all the adjustments, and then I will stamp them onto all the other photos so they're consistent. You can do this with a similar process in Lightroom and lots of other software applications. Um, I don't want to edit thousands of or hundreds of photos one by one, so I edit one, I copy all the changes onto the rest. Cool. Once I've done that, I select all of the images I want in the slideshow and I into the time lapse rather, and then I make a slideshow. Lightroom and Aperture both do this or you can just use iMovie or whatever free movie software you've got. So uh, a couple of the key things here to do is make sure you turn the transitions off and there's no sort of other funky things going on. Righto, so as you're making your slideshow or your first movie in iMovie, you've probably noticed that the, s the smallest duration of each picture the, the, the smallest setting is one tenth of a second. Now that's not ideal because remember the human eye sees roughly 30 pictures per second of cinema so that's what we as humans consider to be smooth footage. To get around this um, I export a video out of Aperture or out of iMovie or out of Windows Movie Maker or whatever at 0.1 of a second duration for each slide. That'll make me a movie. Then I bring it back into either iMovie or Windows Movie Maker or whatever. Let's talk about iMovie for now. I bring it back into iMovie and I use the speed adjuster to speed that footage up to get my 30 frames per one second of footage, which as a general rule of thumb is just sliding speeding up and slowing down until it looks smooth and nice to my eye. Export that and you're done. Enjoy your time lapse. <laughs>